Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Prototype. Before we start we might as well look at the changes that have been made since the last mission. Progressively the bridges start changing in terms of access. Now there is absolutely no traffic on it because the entire area has now been completely quarantined and sectioned off, according to the military. This is about as minimalistic as it does get. Sooner, later on in the game, this place gets incredibly ridiculous. But let's take a look at the other side of the bridge and what has been littered. I always find it weird that there's stuff on the other side that should not be here, like that couch. Or garbage shoes, garbage bags. The, I, I have no idea who who was squatting here, because there's also a shopping cart. The shopping cart also has really weird physics. Really weird physics. But anyway, before we go on to the next mission, let's take a good look at our pedestrian du jour. Not all of the time I'm going to be picking the weirdest ones, but because this person's fairly alright. The only thing I don't I'm really... I don't like the hair. The hair looks just... The, the style is not something I like. It's like a news reporter hair. But before we can do the next mission, we have to buy some things. For instance, the Stealth Consume. I was going to get this anyway because the Stealth Consume is a very handy ability. Being able to stealthily consume enemies instead of grabbing them and viciously pummeling them into our flesh. Instead, now we can just hug them and they'll be part of us. Another thing I'll get is the accompaniment to the sprinting grab, the sprinting throw. So now we'll be able to do a lot of more things on the fly. I also decided to pick up the ground shatter. Simply because it's the base power up for our abilities that we're going to be needing later on. Personally, I don't use the ground shatter very often. And one last thing I might as well pick up now, otherwise I'll forget, is the Thermal Vision Power. One of the most useless abilities in the game. But doing so allows us to unlock our first sensory power. There are two powers in the game, just like uh, the armor power-ups, except sensory is even more useless. It talks about being able to see better in a cluttered battlefield, and for some reason I'm not able to switch to it immediately on the power wheel. It's odd. Well, might as well just set it. There we go. So, did you ever want a blue filter over the entire game? Well, the thermal vision is just for you, then. The one advantage of having the thermal vision is you're able to see through smoke and fire and whatnot in order to clearly see everything better. Now the ground shatter ability is something I don't really use often because it's pretty much the most base ability out of them all. The only re real reason why I would ever use it is for crowd control abilities, but mostly I would use them for civilians and pedestrians in order to kill more of them. And then finally, we can just kind of fly and bring other people in style with sprinting grab and sprinting throw. Alright, enough about that. Time to start the next mission. Proceed with caution, but reacquire the... Does the name Karen Parker ring any bells? Well, it should. She was close to you. An ex-girlfriend. 
I have her address from the laptop. Get to her before the military makes her disappear. Look, if I can find this lead, you can bet they will too. Alex, be careful. We got a lot of quick cutscenes in this specific, specific mission, but let's ho head over to Karen's apartment. I felt like that I should just go over there in just regularly instead of cutting to it because, well, since last time we released Elizabeth Green, the hunters showed up, so I'm kind of wondering what kind of things changed. Okay. First signs don't look too good. We have inexplicable fire coming out of buildings in very isolated places. Red stuff coming out of the sewer grates? Everything getting progressively green? This is not looking good. Nope. Huh. Oh. And meet a new enemy. Because everything is slowly getting more infected, now we get more civilian infected enemies. The Web of Intrigue kind of classifies them as walkers compared to runners, which Elizabeth Green is one of them. But the only difference between civilian walkers and regular civilians is that they attack you for little damage. And they also have actual health. It takes two, at least two hits in order to take them down. We're distracted. They haven't secured Parker yet. Maybe it's because of the veiny building over there. But it's certainly an advantage to us. Now, I could just take over and kill all the military there, but it's really not that feasible. I find that when I do this... Um, military just kind of show up faster than I can take them down. Especially with that helicopter in the way. So it's good that we're able to just go in. Karen Parker. I thought you were dead. I should be. Right now we need to get out of the military cordon. You need to get us a vehicle. A military one if possible. It's the only way we'll be able to get out of the district. That red stuff is spreading fast, person to person, building to building, street to street. It has to be connected to Elizabeth Green. Must be, because those boils and pimples that are bursting and really disgusting were not there before. Now, in order to... Apparently our next objective is just to consume a guy, so I'm deciding to stealth consume him. On the right side of the screen, if you hold down the R1 button, or the right right bumper, you'll have this menu come up. And under it is stealth consume. So now you can just grab people when nobody's looking. Parker, Karen, I. DOB 1176. Doctorate, Genetics, Rutgers University, 7-2-2003. Hired, Gentech, Special Projects, 2-1-2002. Director, Genotyping, Level D Access, reported to Director McMullen, Raymond F. Romantically involved with Mercer, Alex J. Wanted for questioning. Subject is to be detained and transferred to Base 6 Charlie Alpha 1. Well, hopefully we can avoid that, because we kind of need her for information. And here is Captain Charles Conley on the Web of Intrigue. Take this short time to show that Alex is an unnecessary badass for no particular reason. You should be dead. I should be. And, uh... Assault rifles are just not effective against hunters. They do whittle down their health a fair amount, but not really that much. I 
I don't really know how much damage the Ground Shatter really does, but... It's not really enough to be a good weapon against a lot of enemies, especially the harder and tougher ones. Now... Now, how did this happen? That is some weird precision for the game to actually do that. Boing. All the doors just fly open. But anyway, time to get out of this really bad zone. And get to a military base. Now it does say that I have to have a military disguise to get into a military base, but once I get rid of my detection, I might as well show you what it's like to go into a military base as a civilian. That little walled area is where we're going. This is a bit more of repetition from the last mission, what we were told. In order to get into a base, we need to consume a commander, because he has the key. But, now that we have the stealth consume, we're able to do it a lot more discreetly than grabbing him and punching him in the face. Which is definitely good in terms of a ton of military ordnance all over the place. Hello military people, don't mind me, I'm just a woman. As soon as you cross the threshold, you are caught. Ugh. Zero tolerance policy. So, military disguises are really the only way to go. Now, take a look at this tank. This tank is just... Weird. He's nuts, kind of. He just kind of strolls around and... Give me your tasty body. What did the tank just do? Uh, what did you blow up for no specific reason? Did you just blow up the transport and I accidentally turned on my claw power? Oops. Sorry. Don't worry, you'll quickly forget about it once I just leave for a couple seconds. What I was trying to do is show that even in disguise, you are able to still use your sensory powers. It would be silly if you couldn't. Still don't know what you blew up, though. But tank, 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 stop moving! Another thing about commanders is that if you push them around, you get a lot of respect. People don't mind. It's rather odd, to be honest. I don't know how to operate these vehicles, but someone here does. So that's the reason why we're here. We need a military vehicle, but we don't know how to drive one. Of course, we can't just go up to a military person and ask him to teach us this. We have to kill them and consume them and make them part of us. But this is really the point of military bases as a whole. Once you get into them and infiltrate them, you will find very specific people in the base that you have to go around and consume. Each consumption gives you an improvement in one particular ability, whether it be weapon effectiveness, uh, tank control, or plenty of other military-based upgrades that are in the upgrades menu. Now, I could just go bloody completely, but it's always good to start stealth. Since there's only one of them, I might as well just do that. Welcome to the Marine Armor Training Center. There are 19 major systems in this Marine Armored Personnel Carrier, and over 25,000 moving parts. In the next eight months, you will learn all of them. When you're done here, you'll be able to park that vehicle on top of an enemy position and blow the shit out of them. It's my job to get your shit in order. 
It's your job to shut the fuck up and learn. So now we are able to hijack and drive tanks. Always a good thing. Now you may have noticed right before the Web of Intrigue sequence that we got a base consume bonus and a stealth bonus. You get those by consuming all of the priority targets for consumption. Now we could just exit the base and just continue on, but I kind of want a little bit extra. Let's start off alright for this. We don't want to blow everything up just now. There we go. Bases are usually good because not only do you get a bonus for stealth, consuming all of the specific targets, but you also get bonuses for killing everybody during a lockdown. You can elude inside of a base, but it's a little bit more difficult than it, can, than it <laughs> seems on paper, because you're in a small area with a lot of guys. Alright, so let's take these guys down. Another thing about the ground shatter is just it's really slow. Also, they're geez, the people are everywhere. Now you may be wondering while I'm killing everybody, and how did he get over there? I can't get to there, but luckily weapons actually can, so I can't blow them up. But you may be wondering why I didn't go around meticulously consuming everybody in the base. Well, if you do that and kill everybody that way, you actually don't get a second bonus for stealth. There's only one bonus. Now there's also one person left in the building, before I'm done in here, and where is he? How did you get in there? Seriously? This is kind of frustrating, because I can't get in there. There's no way. Uh, just when I think all my glitches are done, and because that one guy is still around, I can't get in. Two people will just keep showing up, so of course I have to die and start over. Eh. <sighs> Alright, so, so with nobody out of bounds, now the base is neutralized. It doesn't give you a lot of a bonus, but every little bit helps in terms of getting all the power-ups. And I could just leave the base as Alex because it's neutralized, but once I go outside everybody will see, hey, it's Alex, and blow him up. So military disguises are always good. Time to drive our tank. Woohoo! Sadly, we can't go into a tank with a weapon in hand, because entering a tank and holding a weapon is the same button. I know exactly how to drive this thing. You may, Alex, but we don't. So, really, the controls are rather simple. It's just mainly analog left analog stick in order for movement of moving forward and backing up right analog stick for aiming the turret around, and we'll learn more as the tank tutorial keeps going. The only thing about the tank, really, is that this may sound just odd, but I, the tank controls seem too realistic for my taste. They're really cumbersome, they, they re they're really cumbersome, and they feel heavy, sure, but using them is just kind of an annoyance overall. Especially when the lock-on on a tank is not really that good. So the right bumper and the right um, trigger, or R1 and R2, or whatever you're using, will make diff your different weapons go. Those are on the left of the screen. So let's get rid of all of these infected. There's one more. There we go. So now that we are familiar with the tank, let's go and get Karen. Certainly one good thing about the tank is that it's good at just plowing down a lot of people. But 
moving around and turning is more slow than it needs to be. It took me a long time in order to actually get to a point where I could go forward because I was sideways. So now it's time to head back to the hive. Or, um, some people term them meat buildings. I prefer meat building. And how the heck did the car get back up on the ambulance? <laughs> this happened roughly, like, out of the... Out of the time of recording, that happened two out of the three times. It was... It was weird. So anyway, breaking down a meat building. Tanks are usually a good way of or in order to do that. However, in terms of um, this specific scenario, tanks are only good for so long. After you deplete your really heavy missiles, which take down almost half the health, then you're just resorting to piddling away at the little measly bullets that don't do a lot of damage, but do slowly take down the health. But doing it this way is really boring, to be honest. There we go, no more meat building. Now it's just a regular blown up building. This is where we should go. I'll mark it for you. Uh, can Please, the hunter come with us? Just get there safely. I think the hunter wants to come with us. Can we bring him along? Oh wait, 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 no. Well, the hunter blew up our tank. Yeah, that can't happen because Karen is too stupid as an escort in order to get out of the tank herself. So while going back here, I decided to go into the alternate route in order to blow up a hive, which is a lot more active. After you unload all of your heavy missiles, then you can just get out of the tank and throw objects at the hive, which is a lot more involved and a little bit more fun. But in terms of your minimal options, it's kind of best, it, but <laughs> the game gets really pissed off at you when you are out of the tank trying to get rid of the hive because it's like, use the tank that we gave you. Come on. Use it all the time. Just blow it up. I'm sorry if the tank is not a good option for half of the fight. Alright, let's get her out of here, because apparently she marked us something on our map, but we can't see it because we're alerted right now. People are noticing us, people think this tank is a threat, which is a bit of an annoyance. And this tank is just gonna... Oh good, it's gonna just blow us to smithereens. Oh, there we go. Uh... Freaking helicopter. I need to get us clear. Yeah, it's just, just... We have major damage. Nobody notices me. Nobody notices me. Now it's kinda of one thing that I did want to we need to keep our heads down, steer clear from any military. That I did want to mention is that Karen said we'll she'll mark our uh, destination on our bad. on our map. Bye. However, of all the tutorials in this game, the there is no tutorial about referencing the minimap in the lower left of the screen. They do go over the, the disguise function, but they don't go over the map. It's almost like they expect you to know what a minimap is, which is a bit presumptuous. People sometimes bring up... Um, it's like, hey, what if this was your first video game and you were wondering what the thing on the lower left was. Well, the game doesn't tell you. Which is a bit odd. But anyway, this is a, just a nice stroll down the street. 
making sure not to make anyone angry because we'll blow up with the next hit. It's also silent because I don't think Alex really has anything to talk about. He's way too serious and way too badass. And so we reach our destination. A dead end alley? This is safe in terms of Karen? Um, I won't go into it. But anyway, the mission's done! Woohoo! A lot of events are unlocked, so we'll look into those. A lot of civilian casualties, those keep on building. But in terms of the mission, it, it is it just me or does it feel boring? There was a lot of tutorial, I know, which is weird because I did say we were getting out of tutorial section, but nope, there's more tutorial. But hopefully everything will bring up in pace again after the last mission. So I'll see you next time, everyone, as we continue to protect Karen. Did I ever tell you Karen and I were together once? Pictures of us at my apartment. At least I assume that was us. Karen worked at Gentech. Maybe she could explain what was going on with me and how to control it. I know now. Freeing Elizabeth Green was a mistake. She was a monster. Infecting everything she touched. Get to Green. Find out who did this to me. I thought she was the key to all of this. And was she? In a way. I knew we were connected. Victims of a common enemy, subjects of a common experiment, and I didn't know. But I had Karen. And we were gonna put a stop to this thing together. Brought to you by Subdeclicious. It's not a word.